Because I knew right from wrong, you know. Because my mom would always preach to me, pray for me, but I was just so hard-headed. I knew, I, um, I knew a little bit of Jesus, but I would always tell her, Christians are hypocrites. God is not real. My dad was a drunk. He used to beat up my mom all the time. And I, I would just sit there and watch it. And at the age of five, um, my mom decided to go live in California to get away from my dad. I had some aunts that lived over there. And she accepted God in her life over there. And she, at that time, she had um, my brother and my sister. She was pregnant with my little brother and had my sister. She was probably like two years old and I was five. But anyways, um, she was there for two years in California and, you know, just learning about the word of God. And then she decided to come back here to Texas and come back with my dad, I guess, hoping everything would change and try to make it work with my dad when she went back I was like seven or eight but anyways the violence was always there my dad used to beat us up kick us for no reason and it was he was very abusive and he would used to tell me um you are not my daughter and you are worthless so I grew up thinking I had that mindset thinking you're worthless you know so I started hating my dad so much I hated him for acting the way he would you know and treating my mom the way he did so I grew up thinking I was worthless because of what my dad put in my mind so I grew up and I remember that at I've, at a very young age, I had this ability that I would say, this is going to happen to you, and it would happen, but it's something very diabolical, and I grew up at the age of 13, I was just lost, and I was, at the age of 13, I had tried cocaine my first drug I didn't try weed or cigarettes I went straight to cocaine and I really liked it it made me feel good and my mom would have no control over me whatsoever like she would try to control me and you know I guess try to change me but I was so out of control I really was and I was just at that time, when I was 13, I was skipping school, hanging with people I wasn't supposed to, and, you know, just dating, like, older guys. So, at the age of 14, I was really addicted to drugs, to, to coke and meth. From, from ages 14 to 17, I would do anything for drugs anything I would um, sleep with guys to get money or drugs um, I would do steal I would do awful things because that's how addicted I was and I had no purpose in life you know I thought I was just worthless and that was it for me you know but I had no goals in life and so I just, I really, I did drugs to get away from everything. The problem to, because I really hated my dad. I hated myself. My, I, my life sucked. I had no love in my heart. I didn't love myself. So that's why I did what I did. Because when somebody's heart is empty, you just... You are lost. You um, you try to do anything to be happy. And no matter what you do, you are not going to be happy. Because 
everything in this world brings brings happiness like for a moment afterwards there's still that emptiness and only God can feel that emptiness in you so <clears throat> I was very addicted I was on probation always getting getting in and out out of juvenile and stuff <clears throat> I was just lost and I don't I'm just gonna keep this story short but at the age of 17 I got pregnant I found out I was pregnant I was one month pregnant it really hit me that I was pregnant and I was confused what am I gonna do with the baby you know should I board it should I I don't know what to do so I was pregnant and I just remember that it was 2005 yeah 2005 in December I was in a motel with my friend she was asleep because she hadn't slept in days and I was just there in the bed and I was just smoking smoking just smoking my meth and smoking and I just laid in bed like that just went back and I started to feel like my heart hurt it or I don't know if I was dying or what but I was panicking and I felt like I couldn't breathe and I was scared because I had never felt like that I was my chest was hurting so I closed my eyes and I was like God have mercy on my soul because I knew right from wrong you know because my mom would always preach to me pray for me but I was just so hard-headed I knew I um I knew a little bit of Jesus but I would always tell her Christians are hypocrites God is not real and because I really thought God wasn't real and but at that time, I started feeling like my chest hurted and, you know, God was real. I, I, was, I was scared to die. And something told me, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So, I was just there. And I remember I closed my eyes. And I f fell. I, w I just fell in a white cloud and I remember as I was sitting down the cloud turned into a swing and this cloud was so beautiful it had like sparkles on it I don't know how to explain it it was so beautiful and I had remember seeing my my hand and my skin and my skin was so beautiful as if I had baby skin I don't know how to explain it my hair when I would see my hair was different long and beautiful like everything was so beautiful about me you know and I remember seeing like in front of me like a curtain open and I looked ahead and there he was God I couldn't see his face I really couldn't but I just knew it was God and he called my name Dow. But when he would say Dow, it was like his voice would hug me. It was a voice that I felt warmth in me. Every time he would speak to me, I felt his love. And I remember that he's he got me he was he's so big and I was so little compared to him he put me in the palm of his hand and I remember and but I couldn't see his face he's like he simply asked me Dow what is your problem you know he knew he knows everything about us it's not like he didn't know what was my problem he knows everything about us, but he just 
simply asked me, Dad, what is your problem? You know? And I told him, because God is like a father you can talk to. You can tell him anything. And I said, Lord, I felt so bad for everything I've done when I was talking to God. And I told him, you know, we can't hide nothing from God. I told him, God, I'm addicted to drugs. I treat everybody badly. I wish I could change my ways, but I just love drugs. I love the way they make me feel. I was just being sincere to God because, you know, I don't know if anybody that's listening to this video, how you feel when you're on drugs, it, you get that good feeling, you know? And I told God, I, I just like the drugs and I wish I could quit. And he simply just said, Dow, let me show you something. So I remember going to this garden. Nobody was there. And I went in there. And I just saw these beautiful, beautiful mansions. Like, I remember the, the rooftops on the mansions were made out of diamonds. And there were beautiful colors I have never seen on earth before. And I remember seeing that almost each mansion had its own river and waterfall. It was so beautiful. Like, I would put my water, my, my hand on the water and it's like I was holding crystals in my hands but it was water I don't know how to explain it but it's just extraordinary like the flowers I saw there is as if the flowers had life in them beautiful flowers and I remember jumping up and down of joy for no reason just because I was happy in that place. And then God came to me again and he told me, I want to show you something else. And I remember that two tall angels grabbed me from my arms and we flew. I went through the space and I remember seeing a whole bunch of demons there, like just roaming around space. And we went to earth and from the earth we went to the sea and from the sea we like went to this cave there wasn't no water in that cave it was just dry land and angels told me go inside and I went inside but as I was going inside I hear a demonic a demonic voice laughing it's his voice was like laughing at me, like making fun of me type of voice. It's a di di diabolical laugh. I don't know how to explain it. But I turn and look at him, and there he was, the devil himself. He's so ugly. He, his skin is purple, like an ugly purple, and he had two horns. He looked full of filth. He's so ugly. I don't know how to explain it. But he's so ugly. That's... Oh. But he, um... He looked at me and said, I will make you lose your faith. And when he said that, it naturally came to me to rebuke him in the name of Jesus. When I did, he screamed so loud because the devil cannot stand the name of Jesus. Now remember that the angels grabbed me. We went back to earth. I mean to heaven. And God told me, it's time for you to go back to earth. I had, I begged him. I didn't want to come back to earth because I'm telling you that place is so beautiful. So beautiful. He told me, only the brave can inherit, inherit the kingdom of God. And 
As he was telling me these things, I was descending to earth again, I guess my spirit. And I told him I was so afraid because I know that if I go back to earth, it's going to be very hard for me to quit doing drugs. He told me, don't worry. You're going to quit. You're going to quit. Just believe in me. You will quit. I remember going back to my body and waking up. And I just started crying. I tried waking up my friend, but she was asleep because she hadn't slept in days. And I was just thinking and thinking and thinking. I remember walking back to my mom's house. And I, to I had told her everything that happened. And me being pregnant, of course, it was more motivation to quit. And I'm telling you, those three months was horrible. It was horrible. I would, I was trying to quit. I would like get the pipes, smoke the pi smoke from my pipes, and then break them and flush them down the toilet. And I was quitting slowly. At the two months, I started getting nausea from be being pregnant. I couldn't stand the smell of drugs no more. I remember a friend guy came to the house like at night and he's like I have some and I was like no I'm trying to quit he bloated in my face and said and I remember just gagging because I couldn't still the stand the smell of meth and it's kind of it's 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 weird how God works in different ways um a lot of people say, well, you just quit because you got pregnant. No. How many people we know that that still do dr drugs and are pregnant or just had and still have kids? And No, God changed me. And he, I, I can't, never. It's been eight, nine years and I haven't touched that pipe thanks to God. And those three months was horrible. When I didn't have meth, I would get demon possessed. Something would come over me and I would just start talking in diabolical tongues and my mom would just pray for me. I remember being in the bed and I would jump from the bed all the way to the closet as if something would throw me. And slowly God was healing me from my addiction, showing me his power. You know, those demons inside of me really um, hurting my body when I would get possessed and I would feel really weak after I would get possessed by my mom I'm thankful for my mother because she prayed for me almost every Sunday she would fast so God can change me and I would I remember I would sit there and laugh at her like God is not going to change me but you know what God does wonderful things if you're looking at this video God is real he did it, in, it for me um if God wasn't real, I wouldn't be doing this video. But God is real and God is powerful. You just got to seek him with all your heart so he can help you. So, in Romans 10.9, it says, if you want to turn your Bibles to Romans 10.9, it says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So if you believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I don't know how many of you will get to look at this video or or what, but and I don't even know what race you come from, what religion you come from, what sins you've committed. But I'm telling you right now, God forgives anything you've done big sin or small sin you're probably looking at this video and thinking well i've never done drugs i don't need jesus my life is right but i'm telling you right now that we all need jesus in our heart you can be the nicest person in the world always donating money doing good for others and this and that you know but if you don't have god in your heart you're lost. You're just as lost as somebody that is doing the worst. You're lost if you don't have God in your heart. But right now, 
if you feel the need and you feel something in you that's telling you, accept him in your heart. Won't you say this prayer with, with me, this prayer of salvation, and please close your eyes and just repeat these words after me. And just say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. You said in your word that whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father, I'm calling you, Jesus, right now. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins, that you were raised from the dead on the third day, and he's, li he's alive right now. Lord Jesus, I'm asking you, now come into my heart live your life in me through me i repent of all my sins and surrender myself totally and completely to you heavenly father by faith i now confess jesus christ as my new lord and from this day forward i dedicate my life into serving you in jesus name amen if you have done this prayer of salvation, my advice for you is to every day seek God. Pray all the time. Simply when you're just going to the bathroom, just be thankful all the time. Read your Bible. Ask God to help you quit whatever is hard for you to quit. Any sins, big sin, small sin, God, if you call upon his name, he will help you. He will heal you because God came. Jesus died in the cross for our sins and he came to heal us from anything that we have. And I really recommend if you're starting in this new life in Christ, to read um, the book from Rebecca Brown, He Came to Set the Captives Free. This book really helped me understand the spiritual world. Um, I read this book and I realized how many things that I had in my life that I needed to get away from. And just read this book, but I'm telling you, if you read this book, pray before you read this book because they'll devil will attack you like he attacked me trying to read this book and many of you are probably laughing like she's cuckoo in the head no the spiritual world is real is real and for many of you think that the spiritual world is not real because you haven't seen nothing in your life i'm telling you it's real there's a devil and there's a god you gotta make your choice you can't have both. You got to make your choice. It's the end of times. We got to repent from our sins. Do right in front of God. Be right with everybody. And God will bless your life abundantly. There will be times where the storms will come. But God is always there. All the time. And I'm very blessed. I've been in Christ for nine years already. And I've been blessed. I have three beautiful kids and my, my husband. And God has blessed me abundantly. All parts of my life, spiritually, financially, everything. So, I hope you liked this video and it was a blessing for your life. Goodbye.